is, I think, okay, this is another thing that we hadn't really touched on, but, you know, as much as uh, Accelerated, definitely the team, I think, slotted to win this, this is Ryze's best chance to get a win on the board, or even just a draw. This is this is the lowest hanging fruit they're going to get for the remainder of this half of the season, and they really need to seize this opportunity. So the pressure is on here for Ryze. All right, Maverick, first ban out, and uh, we'll see also... Ying gone. Maverick is one of the most commonly banned attackers on this map, if I'm not mistaken, as well as Clubhouse, um, as he is so very powerful here. Um, able to open up a lot of off angles on uh, so or reinforced walls, or even just soft walls. As uh, For example, if you're going to um, AVG, there are a lot of positions. If you put a Maverick, you can expose the entire defense. Mira and Echo. The other ones to be taken out. Surprised by the mirror ban somewhat. Um, we've talked about how influential she can be, but also how detrimental she can be to the defense if countered directly. Echo, not surprising at all. It's either going to be an Echo or a Maestro. So, yeah. Not that I'm a developer, but I would imagine that at some point we are probably going to see some balancing plays come into effect for both Echo and Maestro. Because, I would hope so. yeah, the, the fact that they're almost always insta bans. There'll be some changes there, I guess. So it's going to be AVG to start us off. And uh, pretty standard fare here in terms of operator selection. We've got a castle being brought, which... Oh, actually, it's going to be six-picked into uh, Pulse. So not a mind-blowing either way, honestly. Both castle and Pulse could be useful on this map. Maestro also being brought. It's an essential operator when available. The Legion is working. actually... I think Legion bombed. finds his home on Villa, truly. If we're talking about maps that are influenced by uh, by Legion a lot, this is this is one of them. There's a lot of really narrow corridors. You put a Legion trap there, it's going to do a lot of work. Um, so it's good to see that here from Rise. The smoke standard fair, Jaeger standard fair. On the attacking side, pretty much the same. You got a good amount of soft destruction, a little bit of hard destruction. No thermite being brought, but considering AVG is the typically the the first. Defense, uh, that's not surprising. Thermite is useful on AVG, but not as much as a Habana. And you got the Jackal to hunt down those roamers. So we're going to be seeing a rehost, as uh, it looks like we're having some disconnects happening um, with some uh, technical issues. And um, we'll get right back into the match as soon as we can. Yeah. All right. So um, Aviator Games is going to be the first site here. Defense typically wins. It's obviously going to benefit uh, Rise. Yep. Yep, uh, AVG is a pretty, I, mean, I think, all things considered, it's an easy to defend side. At the same time, there are some ways that you can mess it up as a defense, um, and some ways that you can really uh, defang the uh, defense as the attacking team. For example, if you get control of 90, and if you're able to do anything with that gun fault reinforcement, you know, that can be a really powerful position for you to take as an attacking team. If the defense isn't even contending 90, or contesting 90, right? then... I mean, that's really powerful control that you can establish. It also has a lot to do with how the roamers are being played. We saw the pulse, right? So we can expect to see some roamers downstairs. Uh, that means the buck is going to have to contest with those roamers before he can start influencing the site from below. Um, it also you know, is, uh, comes down to if there's any horizontal roamers being played on the other side of the top floor. you know. And another thing to keep in mind is that the basement is a really good position for the defense to have those deep, long rotations. And it's the tricky thing with Villa you cannot really lock down the flanks. Yep. Because if you take control of the horizontal roam on the other side of the top floor, you lock up those stairs in um, in astronomy, then, I mean, you have to stick somebody there for quite a long time, and he's very far from the action. So if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be the Ash, and it's going to take a while still for that Ash to rotate back. So usually you don't see the roamers get completely locked out on this map. And that's why Legion is so such a good operator, as you noted, is that he can cover a huge amount of ground with those goo mines and be able to basically stop every entry point, especially with how long it typically takes to clear Villa. If you sit your Legion inside of the site, by the time he gets those goo mines down and you get to him, he's probably got six of eight so far at minimum. Yeah. And obviously that's going to keep going as we get closer till the end of the actual round. So that's something that ends up putting him in a very pivotal spot as a good operator. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of lesion play on that side. ACOGs likely as well. So a lot of ACOGs, a lot of barbed wire is going to come out. You know, taking uh, taking us back a little bit in terms of meta, there will be quite a lot of barbed wire stacked up on those doorways and those hallways. Um, and this is just common of the site itself, AVG. 
Uh, when we go over to uh, Trophy Statuary, it'll be a little bit of a different story. It's some similar things, but uh, a big note is that Master is going to be a good beachhead for the attacking team as yep. they can you know, take control of it pretty easily, and from there, start to thermite their way into Statuary, and then they can go for the actual, what you would consider to be a typical site take, where you're gonna put down your smokes, you're gonna try and plant under cover, you know, like similar to what we just saw on Border, you know, an armory take, basically. Um, something like that. Legion obviously sees a lot of use over on Master side too. Typically gonna see a bandit over there, you're likely gonna see a smoke. Um, you know, we have we have no mice or we have no echo ban, so there could possibly be an echo that gets trotted out here as well. Um, you do have an echo ban. I have Maestro and Mira actually written down as bans. Yeah, it's it's Echo. We saw Maestro in play before we got to disconnect. Well, that is very strange. Our overlay was incorrect in that case. Excellent. Was that it? Were you going off the overlay? The overlay, yeah. Yeah, I was going off the band. Yeah, so yeah. it is Echo banned. Okay, so yeah. Because I looked up right at th I looked up right at the very end. Oh, whoops. But yeah, so okay, so to continue your thought, Maestro and Echo, they're interchangeable. So it's still what you're saying makes sense. Yeah. Well, We'll see. Point how. was is that you're likely going to see an anchor get played over in that area, especially yeah. on Astro when you have that rotate hole likely situated uh, by the Astro desk that's going to lead right into Trophy. Yeah, right. Or Statuary, rather, in that specific wall. So, here we go. Finally getting into the action, and uh, it'll be all the same operators, all the same exact picks and all that, because, I mean, the round had already started. We got into the prep phase, and because of that, you need to have that reflection. There we go. There's the echo band. Yeah. So it's been corrected. Now, um, Hyper going to be playing on that Maestro. You can expect him to play by 90. Um, we've seen that before from a lot of different people. Um, if you put the Maestro on 90, he's got the evil eyes to gather information, and he could peek with that Alda, which is in... I think there are people who would debate it, but in my opinion, the Alda is just outright the best gun on defense. I would agree. Um, For sure. Yeah. It's just, it's very powerful. And uh, just like you said earlier, I am not a developer, but <laughs> I don't imagine it will always be the most powerful gun on defense. Not quite as powerful anyway. I mean, it's it's been like this for a while, but it's, it, it, you know what? At least it's not quite what Ella used to be. I think, I think Ella was worse when she was around. She was a very strong operator who, <laughs> who worked in every single composition and had a huge pick rate. She wasn't banned because there were no operator bans at that time. Oh man, that was. I can't even imagine Siege without operator bans anymore. Neither can I. Yeah. Just such a wildly different game. Absolutely agreed, and it's uh, definitely I think better for most of these teams. Now, Rise, you can see Vandal specifically waiting for an opportunity to get a kill there, but he's going to come off the angle just before the entry happens, and. That's because EXG is taking their time with their drone work. It's good patience here, and uh, it will actually probably work in their advantage. You can see that uh, Rise Nation has opened up a lot of the floor inside a study, trying to deny that thermite trick where you can avoid the impact trick from above by placing the thermite on the floor. Ghost playing in the main hallway, very dangerous, extremely exposed. He knows that there is pressure coming from Trophy. And he's trying his best to avoid it. There you go. No trick whatsoever, and they'll be able to open that wall up. Ghost coming very close to the first bit of action on the Schlong. Outside of the window connector right next to Statuary. You'll see both Schlongi and Bio losing a little bit of HP, but Schlongi losing quite a bit. I think he took one of those bullets from the Jaeger. He's going to rotate his way over two strong stairs and try to get his way up as he knows that now Rise Nation's roam is not fully extended horizontally. Hopefully he's called this to the rest of his team that he saw uh, two different members of Rise Nation on their cams as well. So It's cool to see Hyper on Maestro. I think that's probably the perfect player to have on that role in terms of him being the main fragger for the defense, but he's also going to be the first one to go down. So that's truly unfortunate. That's all your eggs in one basket, and then that basket being crushed early on into the round. Ghost will take out Shlongi though, and that's a really good frag. He gets refragged by Achieved on 90. Good positioning here for EXG to get that refrag. They've also got a good chunk of sight control because of their current positioning. Another excellent shot from Achieved. That's two for him. He has been coming alive. So over towards the vault, reinforcement, looking to see what he can accomplish, but a little bit far off the beaten path for the time being. We'll have to get back in at some point. You're going to see a rotate come in from Beastly. 
Still in there, and a great C4 will drop Crusher, but Achieved will pick up his third frag, this time on a Vandal, and four, rather, as he's looking for him, and there you go, every single one achieved. Mr. Matthew Solomon himself will put every single member of Rise Nation in the ground. An absolutely Herculean effort, and nobody's gonna slow him down. What an ace there from Achieved. Great job, and uh, I finally got one. The curse is actually broken. The curse is broken. It's done. I Parker, got one. Parker's casted we an ace. It. We did it. Yay! High yeah. five. There we go. Oh, that was good. I got picked up by the microphones. You did it? I think it did. Okay. I choose to believe, Michael. I choose to believe as well, Parker. So one round for Accelerate off the back of Achieved and his excellent gunplay. Achieved heading into this matchup with 41 kills, the fourth highest. Tied for third, actually, alongside Mint, who has obviously increased that number due to the way that Mint played overall, um, with obviously Nyx in second place. So Achieved really doing a lot to elevate his team's Attackers play and working and quite bomb. effectively. And the way that Accelerate uses Achieved is not necessarily a traditional entry fragging role either. A lot of times Schlongy will take that role, and you'll have Achieved there as backup. And if Shlongy dies early, well, then you've still got to deal with the big bad buck. He's just in the right time at the right place and playing the angles proper in that last round. Started things off with killing Hyper 2, of all people, on what I believe was a 90. Impressive feat, that's for sure. Now, Ryze is going to go back to AVG for the second time in a row, trying to mix up those bomb sites too much. AVG, of course, standing for Aviator Gaming. It's just a very easy way to say it. Spit it out quite fast. Sometimes you need to lay on some brevity here in order to make the calls on time. Oh, no, Hyper getting tagged as he wanders past a window. I think that was from England, maybe? Trying to shoot open a wall? That's my guess. Just one pellet from the shotgun, it looks like, considering how little much damage he actually took. Could have gone real bad, real fast. It could have, yeah if it had been a little bit high. But, still alive, still kicking. Hyper, still expected to do work for his team. And EXG going for a very similar, if not exactly the same, attack strategy. Shlongi once again entering the building by himself. The far side, away from the site, on the north end of the building. Achieved already doing quite a lot of work here. He's gonna take out an evil eye, and was placed on the floor, very exposed to the sledge. Shlongi, the perfect operator for this job, but definitely not an easy one all the same. Even if you could see those footprints, there are opportunities to catch you off guard as a jackal. Still trying to figure out exactly where this roam is going to come from from Rise Nation. Beastly doesn't exactly play a pulse on multiple different levels. Example, they don't always see him downstairs. Of course, we see that he's up top, so he's gonna be waiting on that second floor, not too far off of the site and not too far off the rest of his teammates. He's going to be in the middle of the vault, so the connector essentially between the two sides. See Tomas droning achieved in there, and he's going to find the Jaeger. They're just trying to dare Ghost to be able to move here. Tomas will actually fall off, and Ghost will head towards the stairs. So a smart idea, because then you don't have Ghost possibly popping back in as achieved as there now, and Schlongi not too far off as, in addition to the rest of his team, and Accelerate is just holding, but they're bleeding a lot of time on this clock. Still on 90 is Hyper, but he goes down once again, the first death for anybody as Biologic takes him out. Chief downstairs looking to push up into the main stairs. Ghost is positioned there, and uh, he will take down Achieved. So no ace this time around. I mean, it wouldn't be possible after Biologic's heal, but no 4K. There you go. Achieved shut down, and that's going to put pressure on the rest of his teammates. And Hyper also being shut down. The top fraggers for both teams already eliminated, which is going to be... Nice and even because of that. Crusher inside a study, just waiting to make his push and decide there's not a whole lot of time here for EXG. They do need to put the pedal to the metal. Hyper going down and Achieve going down are two big windows for both teams, but it'll be up to the rest of the supporting cast to see what they can do around their All-Stars being silenced, at least for the remainder of this round. Bio will start things off with a kill on the Ghost as the rest of EXG tries to go in through the doorway, but they'll get cut off by a toxic canister. Bio will find a target of his own, though Beastly takes out Tomas. Both teams find themselves in a position where they're gonna need to hurry. Beastly very low as Shlongi just charges on in, but it's a double from Ryze as they're looking to try and find Crusher who has a very limited time on his hands and does not have the diffuser. It's England who'll finish things off there as Ryze Nation are able to put one on the board. And all it takes is killing Achieved early on in order for you to win. Hmm. As much as Hyper got eliminated as well, it looked like Ryze was able to lock out that round 
a lot of the angles that we saw accelerate challenging were lost fights. The only two that really went accelerate's favor were the two early kills that Biologic was able to get. Now we will be going to Living Room Library of all places from Rise. So this is the uh, this is the offsite that we talked about, the place where we are so rarely going to see played by anybody. And uh, it is definitely going to be a mix-up for Accelerate that they will have to Defenders account to for. Likely expecting Statuary, Trophy, or Kitchen. But, uh, oh boy, will they be surprised. Yep. All right, so look over on Ryze's side of things onto their defense here, and it's going to be a very similar lineup, though we will see the Mute come out. The Pulse will be gone. This was the site that I said the teams were playing more frequently downstairs. Very intriguing. The general wisdom amongst people, or the conventional wisdom among, amongst most people, is that, well, the bomb site downstairs in library and living room is not super great. No, by any not. stretch of the imagination. And a, lo a big part of that is how easily you can isolate the south side of the site. One thing that is really shocking to me is the Maestro being uh, unbanned and not being played in this round. He's been played two rounds so far in AVG, yes, but not here. Learning. Now, ben, the reason that's so surprising to me is because of how easily you can isolate the south side and get a plant mm -hmm. with nobody on the defense able to really influence that plant. But, I mean, it's on EXG to do that, but it's just weird that Ryze has given away one of the, I would what I would consider to be one of the more useful tools on this defense. All right. So, Entry in, bandit tricking happening, and a bit of a holding pattern now. Ishlangi will find his very first target. It's the bandit not too far off, being shown as only three meters away. Opening up a sight line just by the art studio. Villa, oftentimes, that bottom floor sees so minimal play that I think a lot of people struggle with exactly visualizing where these walls open up. Vandal V, the very first kill on to achieve with a great shotgun blast to the buck who gets a little bit too close to the sun and ends up getting burned. So achieved after that ace, unable to really accomplish anything in the following rounds. It it's going to put pressure on the rest of his team, but Hyper is still alive, and finally he comes into play. Tomas goes down, and while well, Hyper is on low HP, that's still a frag, and another one in Rise Nation's favor. So far, the secret to this round for Rise has been their aggression, able to get those early frags off-site and give their team an advantage. Rise can just hold on, at least for the time being, and if Hyper still has the ability to band trick should they need to on any of these walls, it's very advantageous for Rise Nation, who, need we remind you, are still looking for their very first victory in Pro League. In fact, sitting at the bottom right now of the I NA scoreboard and leaderboard bomb. with zero points. Victory or drop would be nice right now for Rise. Looks like they might be poised to take this round, though. So we come down to the last minute, and they still have a very distinct advantage. You can see a little bit of a contention here. Vandal is going to miss some important shots, but his teammate Hyper will back him up. Beastly gets the final kill into Biologic, and Ryze take the round in dominant fashion. What I believe to be a perfect round. I don't think anyone died there for Ryze. So, well done, indeed. And uh, that puts them up 2-1, taking the lead for the first time. A really good round from Ryze Nation here, and Accelerate just not looking like they know what to do on attack at all. Rise Nation could be benefiting from the fact that Villa does work really well for the defense, especially when you pull out a surprise strategy like going down to the living room. Yeah, so that living room defense, a big part of that I think was just them, and by them I mean Rise, getting aggress aggressive and taking fights offsite. And then it was the surprise, as you said, for EXG. Right. All right. So... Next round. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many. Go over to trophy and statuary, Michael. You have a Meister on the board, and it's actually going to be ran this time. It's going to be run by England. You'll put Vandal on the smoke, which is interesting to see. Then you'll have the roaming duo, likely of Ghost and Hyper. Ghost's impact on this team needed to be quite large to fill the role from Vertical when Vertical left. The way that Hyper and Vertical were able to work together on this roster is hard to overstate. It was integral to the success. In fact, 
I feel like we say it every single time. This was indeed the roster, minus Vertical and now plus Ghost. It was the second best team in North America through the second half of season number eight. But through season nine, Ghost have, Ghost's impact has actually been quite minimal on the team. Mind you, it could just be the early shakes because this is his first season of Pro League. I mean, he did some pretty wor good work in the second round, to be he fair. Did. He did. By the center stairs. Mm -hmm. So, definitely worth noting that, I mean, he, he's got the potential. He clearly is player capable. I think it's just waiting for him to find his place on the team. And uh, that can take some time. Absolutely agree with that. There's an adjustment period for people who come in, and Ghost is somebody who's been seeing his stock rising time and time again. And obviously I trying to work with somebody like Hyper is paramount to your team's success. Yeah, Hyper being the performer for Rise, for sure. And it's funny, you know, it's crazy because he's... Uh, Bomb located by attackers. All things considered, he's not uh, the most experienced player in Pro League. I mean, he came in, what, two seasons ago? He was brought in last season, last if I recall season. correctly. Yeah. yeah. It feels like two seasons because we just transitioned to the, the double season in six months. But yeah, it's been, it's been over six months. Yeah. yeah, he's been he's only been in Pro League for a little bit over half a year. So, Swapping yeah. well, all said and done uh, on that, we've got a minute expended here from Accelerate. And they're just starting to work their way in downstairs. Rise Nation still has those roamers in the bottom floor looking to hold on to that roam. And there isn't any pressure being applied to the anchors just yet as we hit the halfway mark. It's actually been quite slow for Accelerate on every single take, even the one at which they won the very first round with Achieved killing everybody. It still took quite a while to get there. So, like I said, it could just be an unfamiliarity with Accelerate knowing this map, and maybe Rise being a bit unpredictable. I think that's the case. Well, we'll find out. I mean, this is still very early having only seen three rounds. Shlongi setting himself up for a kill or two. He's got two roamers on these stairs right in front of him. I don't think he's aware of it though. He's also got uh, somebody peeking him from the stairs. So this is a bit of a bait, but Hyper not able to seize the opportunity until just now. Shlongi goes down and that's a good bait from Ryze to establish a man advantage. Typically when Ryze has that man advantage, they take the round by extension. Biologic on this repel, not able to accomplish anything, and it's going to be an entry into astronomy, and they will take down England on those Astro Stairs. Biologic also able to eliminate Beastly from the window, so good teamwork there on EXG, and a massive chunk of control here in Astro. Hyper coming up from the stairs, but he will expose himself without being able to land the shot. Put himself on low HP. Crusher takes out Vandal, and Rise Nation falling apart at the seams, both by the center stairs there, trying to rotate back into sight. The diffuser is, Attackers though, going activated. to be planted. Hyper on low, and Ghost, the only one alive, as he finally gets finished off inside the main hallway. He sees the head, but cannot land the shot. Some bad reactions in that moment. He's looking for one frag at least, and he will get it. Chief goes down, again, not really helping out his team in that moment. Ghost eats a few damage er, from the crossfire, and he's not able to see Thomas inside of Astro, and EXG will take the round. Really the star of the show there for EXG is the teamwork, able to trade off those kills. Tomas came onto this roster as their coach originally, and then of course stepped in to replace Nyx. No, not that Nyx, the other Nyx. Hmm. And since then, Tomas has done excellent work on this team. He has looked extremely confident, he's fragged well in support roles. Obviously as a coach, he's got the vision, as well as the smarts, that can be applied in a real-time sense. It's a big part of why Accelerate was able to almost make it to the final three of the NA qualifiers. They took out Dark Zero before falling to Orglis. But ultimately, I think a lot of people looked at Accelerate and expected that there would be a lot of potential there. And so far, that potential is slowly being realized. You don't have a lot of opportunities as a brand new roster. And if you look at Accelerate, the only member of the team that has any real tangible pro league experience with Schlongi for the couple games that he played on Beast Coast slash C9. That was it. The rest of the team was coming in with very minimal changes. The only difference is, is that Tomas came onto the roster after they'd qualified. That's it, they didn't make any roster moves, which is actually very surprising for a team coming from Challenger League. And since then it's been slow progression, but ultimately there's been improvement there. I feel farther back, 
Usually when a team would qualify out of uh, Challenge League and go into Pro League, you'd see a complete rehaul of the roster. They would keep what they consider to be the right players and replace the wrong ones with other people. And that's just, you know, based on their consideration most of the time. And this is an inconsistent thing that would happen all the time, but it was, it was common. And I don't think that that's the case so much anymore. A lot of the time when a team comes out of Challenger League these days, you can keep a pretty consistent roster, at least as much as most teams will in Pro League. Don't have to hold them to a higher standard than every Pro League team. So, achieved, working his way in here to the bathroom, master bathroom, and already very early on, having a little bit of control on the attacking side for Accelerate. As you can see, Rise Nation just drawing a line in the sand in the middle of the map and not roaming on the north side of it, allowing for Accelerate to take very early control. Uh, and that is, I think, some inefficiency on Rise's side and some great efficiency on Accelerate's side. Good decision making here from the Buck to open up that angle as well. Could have potentially gotten a kill, but he clearly didn't know about it. Schlongi from another angle will take out Beastly. And there you go, the pulse already gone. How do you lose your pulse that early with a minute to go when usually the way Beastly plays is sitting inside of the vault upstairs? That is yeah. really perplexing. Good kill, though, for Accelerate to have. That's a lot of information just by the wayside for Rise Nation. And Ghost is going to eat some damage as well. Hyper exposed on 90 and his position given away. He is just waiting to fall. He's got likely a two-way, possibly a three-way crossfire onto this position. And it's really just a matter of time before he gets eliminated. It's going to be achieved to finally take him out. And that's achieved coming back to the fragging after his initial ace. Yeah, I think that's kill number eight, maybe kill number nine for Achieved so far. I think it's eight because Beastly go. was taken out by Shlongi, so yeah, that is correct. And it's essentially freed up study now. And the utility that that Accelerate has can now be applied to pushing onto the site. Rise Nation losing their quarterback inside of the vault. But the good news for them, they still got a C4 from Ghost, presuming he hasn't used it yet. Oh, oh no. he's actually running a bulletproof camera. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on England with his toxic canisters. Ghost coming back to site, he'll find Shlongi on the stairs and now inside a study as it's all his. Great ACOG from Achieved as he just dispatches England and removes his head from his neck. Achieved looking for yet another. This Ghost will need to come back into sight. There's Tomas, trades off on a Ghost with Vandal there to take Achieved down, and Vandal's position in the middle of the site is known. He sees the Thatcher, a great shot, but there's an opportunity for Crusher to peek in through the doorway, and he will. The Ibana dispatches Vandal, and Accelerate Gaming will put another on the board, two in a row for them. So far, good half from Accelerate. They ended here 3-3. Three, three. Then uh, that would be favor to Accelerate Gaming. Uh, as again, you're supposed to win your defenses here on this map. It's going to be AVG again for Rise. Or oh, no, look at that. They're going to mix things up. Go to Living Room again. Interesting. Well, it worked. Why wouldn't you do it? I mean, AVG has worked for them as well, Parker, but it also has failed more than success. So I think this is a good call from Rise, all things considered. Uh, if they end at 3-3, Accelerate still takes the win in the half. But uh, at the same time, I mean, that would be much more comfortable than 4-2. So, Attackers need to locate I don't know. And defuse bomb. I think a lot of this is going to come down to how well Accelerate, Accelerate is able to adjust to what they saw last time they were here because the information is now known to them. The way that the Rise Nation plays this is pretty apparent. Aggression. Rise tries to keep the fights off-site. Accelerate needs to find a way to isolate some chunk of the site, go for that objective play, because if they just stick to the frags, they're going to find themselves really spread thin, and Rise will probably take this round win. And because of that, technically draw up the half, but we're looking at it honestly. You can't draw up this, even if you put it to 3-3. Three, three. Now, Rise Nation was last seen on this matchup in the qualifiers just a couple days ago against Orglis. And it was very, very close. It came down to a 7-7 split in the best of three series with overtime, in which a 3-2 numbers advantage in favor of Rise Nation with a pulse still on the board, got thrown away by an excellent play from Crazy on Orglis. So Rise Nation do have some experience on Villa. Whereas for Accelerate, well, they might not be as well practiced here. Even though they do have an advantage right now. 
Well, they're gonna, looks like, try to take from the south side. Makes a lot of sense. This is how most teams would choose to attack this. Uh, there's no Thermite in play, which means they're not gonna be able to open up that south wall as much as they would like to be able to. There is a soft wall into the vault, though. Which is potential for uh, a take. You can see Beastly playing a punch hole through that vault wall, so it's probably just a bait here from Rise. See Hyper above trying to play the vertical game with Ghost, and uh, they can deny the push on the south side below, but they're being pushed back above, which means they're gonna lose that control really quickly. Also wanted to know that Accelerate did play this in the qualifiers as well against Dark Zero and actually beat Dark Zero on this matchup. So oh. trying to uh, trying to keep all this de all these details in my head. A grenade gets sent down from the second floor, trying to hit Vandal as the smoke takes a tiny bit of damage. He also smokes off the doorways. So no toxic canister that'll be used. Another one will go out and it will stop Achieve from being able to wander on in as the buck is just a couple steps away. Cooking another frag grenade, it'll get sent out, but Vandal has moved off. He'll go back to his position, but Achieved so surely saw him there. Hyper eliminates Schlongi, and well, Achieved will have to go for something really big. He knows that there might be a couple sites looking at him, and Biologic may be able to do covering work. As Vandal has the SMG-11 out. A good shot from the skeleton key of Achieved will shut down that final toxic babe, and a smoke, good coordination. That's a freebie for Achieved. Looking for another. Oh, he'll find it. Take out Beastly. As Crusher gets felled by Ghost and Rise will answer back. Tomas hitting a goo mine, trying to pull one out of his foot. But there's not a lot of time left to work with. Achieved is in. He'll grab a third. And he has the diffuser as well. Killing potential and utility on the board right now as the buck goes to plant. Trying to see if the rest of Accelerate can cover. Tomas will shut down any possibility of Achieved being able to get an ace, and it'll be a full house instead with three kills for Achieved and Tomas with two. As Ghost and him will trade and Achieved, excellent work. Doesn't even need to get that diffuser down, but that'll be 50 kills as well for Achieved. Welcome to the 50 Club. So, how did EXG win that round? Achieved is insane. And he walked into sight and killed people. And that is how they managed to take that. Great coordination from Accelerate, uh, to be honest, in terms of taking out the smoke. The flash there was instrumental in that first win for uh, Achieved. Following that, though, excellent gunplay from Achieved to maintain sight control. The, initial, uh, the second kill also was very impressive. Just in general, uh, Accelerate pivoting around Achieved's excellent gunplay. Achieve just be is able to literally open up sites by himself. Yeah. He is quite literally a can opener with that skeleton key, and then he's able to find everybody on the other side of it. He's achieved 12 kills <laughs> through six rounds. I, I see what you did there. Thank you very much. Yeah. And yes, he does break 50 kills as well. So really the star of the show on the uh, Accelerate side, and a big reason why they are up right now 4-2 now, as Accelerate goes to defense, they are going to be the favored team now. And given that they already have a 4-2 split, they are poised to take this match pretty confidently. Um, they might drop a few more rounds, but Accelerate right now, really in a good spot. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna say it. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say Accelerate right now, accelerating rapidly. But it's the other Accelerate. It's a good one. No, but it's, you know, it's oh, the other. That's a good one, that's a good one. I couldn't do it. I'm not like you, Parker. You know, I'd imagine that Accelerate's name is like a playoff of like picking up, but also excelling at the same time. Yeah, you're probably right. That's I imagine when they were brainstorming it, that was probably what was going on with it. Yeah. Excellent work on the name there. It's a uh, it's a double entendre. I really like it. A nice a, a portmanteau, if you'd call it that, Michael. I don't know what that one is. It's a portmanteau, Michael. Yeah, I don't know what a portmanteau. Is. Oh, ho, ho, achieved from below. Sends up an airmail and say goodbye to Hyper as there will be no successful entry whatsoever for the Ash as Rise Nation star player gets cut down, or one of their star players, rather, and somebody who they rely upon greatly. The rest of the team will need to make up for the lost time. They will not be able to get back with the Ash being felled. So that is by far and away the worst person to have taken down. I mean, partly because of the Ash, but also mostly just because it's Hyper. And Hyper is the player on, on Rise. He hasn't been having the most amazing match so far, uh, as you can see in the middle of the pack, but uh, at the same time, yeah, that might also be why Rise is currently trailing. Nearly missed shot there from Ghost, but a missed one all the same, and that will force Achieve to fall further back into study. 
still alive and still able to call out using that cardiac sensor. It's going to be a huge boon for Accelerate when Ryze comes to clash. Half the round gone, and Ryze have accomplished getting control of 90. They haven't been able to take out the Evil Eye, either of them, and Crusher is going to eliminate Ghost through that drone hole. Great job to Crusher seizing the opportunity, and good job to his teammate for coordinating that play. But it looks like he might have missed the impact trick there on the gun vault. One thing that this is really showing is that those two rounds that Rise Nation put on the board were not necessarily due to the fact that Rise outright won them, but Accelerate just didn't play them very well. And that, I think, is a pretty big story heading into this round. And this split, because Accelerate did just take this, take the first half. Shlong is going to go down to Vandal, though. Yeah. So the buck fragging out on both halves. Looks like he found the Jaeger below, actually. So that's just one of the roamers being pinched off, which will give Rise Nation a little bit more time to be able to get back to the site. But all the same, Accelerate can still just hang on. There's not a lot of time left for them to work with here as Accelerate on a full court press at the moment. And a run out opportunity. And there you go, Vandal on his drone. Achieved gets cut down, what? but he still craps the kill onto England. This is a monstrous performance for Achieved and what he's able to put together with Beastly now languishing by the door, looking in all the way towards Aviator Games. What is he going to see? Absolutely nothing. A smoke will go out, but he's going to get fed upon Crusher, and this is a winnable situation for Beastly if he can make good use of the time, but no, he'll hit the goo mine, and Tomas is there to say, no, sir, no, thank you. I feel like, one for Accelerate. I feel like we're talking a lot about Achieved, but also Achieved is insane. What was that? He was supposed to get a frag there on the run out and then die. But he got a frag on the run out and then traded with England. There is no world where he's supposed to trade with England. Impressively done there for Achieved, really standing apart. Uh, and Accelerate, one away from match point. Could you imagine if Ghost had landed that shot early on and Achieved just didn't get to play that round, we probably would have seen Rise take it. Yeah. I would imagine so. It's very difficult for a team to come back when one member of either team just catches fire that same way. Think about Redeemer when we saw him on Villa that one time around, playing on the Maestro. He got an ace with it, and then he just carried the team through attack both attack and defense. Yeah. Very similar to what we're can. seeing from Achieved here. He's got 15 kills. He's got two more rounds to go. We could see for the second time today another 20-plus kill game from somebody. Could you imagine if Achieved breaks the record. He would have to he would have to get an ace and then some. But it's possible. There's still rounds left for it. Potentially at the at the minimal here, we're gonna see two more rounds. Uh, and given the way that these rounds have been playing out, that's entirely possible. Uh, but I don't know. You can't count on Rise Nation just yet. Hyper could wake up at any moment and this could start going back into Rise's favor. Maybe they'll bring it in they could still win, but at this point, it, it seems like they're vying for a draw, even though we're not on match point just yet. Looks like it's going to be a full attack through Master. As that you can is see, a colorful lineup. All five of the attackers spawning in the same place and rushing in nice and quick. Right, it is a very colorful lineup here on uh, both sides, actually. We've got the... But look at, speaking of, a name that has been on the tip of our tongues all night. It's, or not the tip of our tongues, a name that's been on our lips all night. Achieved is downstairs with that cardiac sensor. Yeah. He should have all this information available to him as he is not that far removed from every single member of Fry's Nation being up towards the master side of things. But he's going to be tracked there from Beastly, so that's good information being gathered. They know there's somebody downstairs. They know it's the Pulse, and that's going to be on Beastly, looks like, to lock him out, but not going to be the case as you see Achieved working his way back to site up through Astro Stairs. Good information gathering here from Rise to see the shield, but uh, it's probably not going to matter, actually, as, uh, I mean, Biologic's not exactly trying to hide himself. He's a clash. He's just trying to delay as much as possible. He's gathering good information and helping his team on the drone economy front. There is no Zofia, which means the main counter to that clash is not going to be in play. And no Capitao either. It's really going to be incumbent upon Vandal to be able to get a frag grenade to deal with the clash of Biologic, who is now just guarding the bathroom door. It's a dangerous prospect, though, for Rise Nation, because they don't have any real counters, no suitable counters. And with two to three actual three speeds on Rise Nation's side of things, 
they could conceivably just charge her and double up on her, but it's going to rely on the rest of Accelerate being there to stop them. Yeah. Don't expect Accelerate to let that happen, but it also depends on how Biologic decides to play this Clash. Gas Canister doing a lot of damage and might actually finish off Vandal. Yes, indeed. There you go, Tomas. Excellent placement of the Gas Canister. First man goes in the way of Rise Nation. Saw one of those breaching rounds from Ash gets sent out into the foot of the Clash of Biologic, and we'll do a tiny bit of damage, but not all that much, as now Bio is going to have some assistance from Achieved pushing on up. Very wary of the opening in the floor beneath him, England will find a kill on the Tomas. And that's the smoke off the board. Shlongi not too far off of the master bedroom doorway. His sight is trained at head level, or crouch level rather, and could possibly just inch his way around. Prefire will not find any intended targets. Crusher's there to take out Hyper, and it's going to be an absolute shootout. But there's Beastly as he comes out of nowhere looking for a second. Shut down by Crusher. Crusher shut down too as England manages to find a big kill. It's just Biologic and Achieved, and the Clash is going to be in such good position as Achieved picks up one all the way over on the other side of the site. And with just England going in, he's actually going to be tased to death before he steps on a goo mind, and that'll be Accelerate on match point as they are making very, very fast work of this Rise Nation team. It's six to two. Yeah, an absolute lockout there from Accelerate. The Clash doing a whole lot of work. In fact, you, you may not have noticed, I mean, Rise Nation, they wanted to push into Astro, but why didn't they? Because there's a Clash there and they didn't have any tools to deal with it. The barbed wire to boot with the goo mines, there was no way to rush the Clash. The grenades would have been difficult to land because of the orientation in bathroom. And think about it, the tub gets in your way. If you vault into that tub and you try to nade the Clash that way, that's the first of all, that's the only way to get the angle without just actually peeking the door. If you vault into the tub, the Clash is going to call that and somebody's going to peek you and you're going to die if you're trying to prep a grenade. If you try to just peek into it, you're risking your life just as much because anybody holding the angle from Astro or Astro Stairs will take you down. So Ryze made the right call in a sense in that they just went away from the master bathroom take. The problem is, after they f forgot about the master bathroom take, they didn't hold that flank. So the Clash just walked into the bathroom and said, hey guys, this is clear! So the rest of Accelerate knew, hey, we don't need to hold Astronomy, we can focus entirely on the Statuary hold. Because of that, all the barrels went that direction. Clash stayed in bathroom to hold down the flank just in case, until it was well known by Accelerate that all of Rise was pushing from Master. So, I think poor flank management there from Rise, poor pressure from Rise, and some really, I think, not the right operators to deal with that clash. In all Attackers fairness, though, to Rise, if I'm not mistaken, the clash Attackers was six picked into. Yes, she was. So there was no reveal, there was no way for Rise to know and adjust to it. But at the same time, I mean, Zofia is not exactly a bad operator. No, and Rise Nation, just in case there might have been a six pick to a clash yet again, you don't see anybody from Rise Nation bringing that out again. So this could have been Accelerate driving that wedge even deeper between these two teams by running a clash with no counter. Yeah. Now, uh, if we've looked through the four games so far, Rise Nation has averaged two rounds per game. They are on perfect path for that right now. Yep, some three, some one, but average two. And um, if they get another, then that would be on the high end for them. But right now, I don't <laughs> see that as likely. Accelerate have been really locking this out on the defensive side. Uh, we talked about this before in the first half where yeah, even if it Rise had ended at 3-3 in the first half, which they didn't, they ended at 4-2. But even if they had, it still would have been a win for Accelerate, and that's because you want to win the defense on this map more than anything. And that's, yep, that's really held true as Accelerate, as soon as they go to defense, they haven't lost a single round yet. I was going to say, Accelerate has done a great job on both sides of the equation. Rise were the ones who struggled in their half and really what they should have walked away with. This is a very cheeky angle from Crusher, just if I can... You would call it cheeky? I would call that nasty. That's a nasty angle. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Tomas is there to support him as well as it's a kitchen defense downstairs on what could be the final round for Accelerate and Rise Nation. Biologic will start it off with Vandal using that skeleton key to open things up and then they say, okay, well, you're going to take that away from you. How about we take this from you ourselves? And C4 gets thrown, blows up the buck. Looks like the Jaeger has been detected in that storage room and... Uh you can see that the mark's coming down, but nobody is able to get the kill just yet, except for England, as it turns out, who will finally take out Crusher. Ghost also takes out Tomas, so here we go. Rise Nation, not to be counted out just yet. Chief is still alive, though, and he's in a perfect position to get the flank. 
Claymore is going to give him hesitation, but Insight, we do have a good setup here overall from Accelerate as well. Achieve will get Hyper on the flank, so those are your two top contenders contesting each other, and Hyper coming out underneath. Shlongi has a really good read here, being able to see all the way into that furniture room as well as England cannot deal with the bulletproof camera that is going to continuously give his position away. And because they know about the furniture room pressure, Achieved is in great position to dive on them, but he will be given away as Ghost looks around the corner. That must assuredly have been a flank drone to be able to tell that the vigil was coming in. Achieved is still there. Oh, and he'll down the IQ. He jumps right on in. There's two more bodies not far from him. He'll see the Hibana. Achieved going huge, looking for the final kill. As it's just up to Beastly as his team twists in the wind. He'll make it a 1v1, still winnable, but needs to cut down by the UMP. And it'll be Biologic sending this game and sending us home for the night as Accelerate. Get a monstrous performance out of Achieved and the rest of the team along for the ride as Rise Nation cannot get more than two rounds, it seems, per match. They will still remain winless. And this is big for Accelerate, who will ascend the standings in large part due to Achieve's 19 kills. So the story of Rise for this season, first match for the season, a 4-7 they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with DZ, but not surprising. DZ tends to take their time in getting wins. Then they lose to Orglis, 1-7. They lose to Resprosity, 1-7. They lose to EG, 2-7. And now another 2-7 against EXG. And on the other hand, the victors for today. Accelerate, also not having a great start to their season, but a win against Orglis. And now their second win here against Rise. So Accelerate... Doing their, doing their best to pick things up, start getting into this season, rise still by the wayside. Yeah. This is very similar to what we saw last season, too. Keep that in mind. When they were known as Mouse, they finished dead last in North America. So what ends up happening? Well, they end up climbing the standings. Rise Nation's going to hope that that's the case, but a team that a lot of people thought would be in the very bottom standings, given their performance through the first two weeks accelerate, has only been getting better as time has gone on. We have an interview ready with them, though, so we'll bring them up and ask them a couple questions. Bio, nice to finally meet you, by the way. Congra hey. Congratulations. Hey. hey, nice to meet you too. All right, so let's talk about your team over the last five weeks. You came very close to making the final three in the Invitational Qualifiers, and I'm actually going to ignore Pro League for just a second here and say, you played an awful lot of games through those qualifiers. How instrumental were those matches in helping your team grow, find its footing, and continue to improve as a roster against top-tier competition? Um, I mean, from the beginning, like we have, we just picked up our coach Tom Tomas as a player. He's very young. His first season of comp was in Challenger League. And then we also have Crusher, even though Crusher played uh, Challenger League when Challenger League first was a thing, he still took like a year off. So this is like his first real season back last CL season. And then coming into pro league season, he was, uh, he was really nervous too. But like those two players are some of the top young players I've ever played with. So like they just needed the the experience to know that like, you know, they can play at this level. And they finally got it um in all those matches we played. Yeah, Tomas in particular really seemed to come alive in the qualifiers and has made a hell of an entrance on your team, which just furthers the uh, the assumption that coaches really can help a team out when they come on in. Now, in your actual play going up against Rise Nation, you saw that Rise Nation played this map against Orglis just a couple days back. You played it against Dark Zero, but the way you played against Dark Zero seemed to differ quite a lot. So how many of your strats carried over, and which ones did you say, hey, let's make some adjustments now that we do have Tomas being more familiarized with the team? against Rise Nation, who you had some footage on? Actually, most of the strats that we do on attack, even though we do, like, practice a lot, most of them are, like, on the fly, and I just see where people are, and I just tell people, like, what to do. So versus, like, DZ, I noticed, like, they don't play anyone below, so we didn't have to worry about anyone below, just like Rise, They don't play anyone below, so we don't have to worry about it. We can just focus on the site and get map control. And Rise is just like DZ. They don't play anyone on the opposite side of the map which you're attacking so you can get it for free so it's just instant map control for us and the only reason why we like flipped the push that one time av is because uh i just wanted to like change it up because they were countering it very hard the second time they beat us so perfect um 
anything that you want to say about your teammates, by the way, the fans, the sponsors, et cetera, seeing as how this is, I believe this is, this is the first time that we've ever actually spoken in any real capacity. And of course it's your, uh, I got to talk to, uh, your good friend achieved the other day. Anything to say as we end off the interview? Um, I'm going to say, uh, thanks to all the fans that we have for accelerate the org. Thanks for supporting us. Uh, thanks to all the haters and doubters. Cause you guys really help us a lot. And then, uh, I think good ga good game to those guys on Rise. Those are my boys over there, but uh, we had to come out with the win today. This is a big victory for you, and hopefully we'll see more out of the team as you continue to grow, continue to groove with each other, improve and adapt as well. Thank you very much, and all the best in your next matches. Uh, thank you. Thanks. So a pretty impressive victory over Rise, who really need to do something over these next couple games. There's only two days left. Only two play days left until we're done the first half of the season, and we have zero points for Rise. And we actually have some standings for you, too, in just a moment to be able to show you and put into perspective exactly where everybody's seated in the region. But until then, takeaways from today's matches. Yeah, um, my takeaways are pretty much the same as everyone else's. Rise really need to get themselves out of the gutter, um, as they are stuck there, and it does not look good. Uh, the main carries for Rise, Hyper, I mean, today he didn't really have much for performance. Uh, overall, though, he can't be relying on that one person. We talked about it earlier today, actually, how top-heavy teams really are not, you know, long in the terms of longevity, very feasible. Um, we'll bring up the standings, and we'll actually uh, talk about the actual full outcome of today. Here you go. So, uh, another thing, Evil Geniuses continuing their dominance. I did not expect it to be quite the way it was in terms of the evil genius dark zero match uh i was expecting to be honest with you a draw but it came darn near close um reciprocity also do keeping up their pace as they put themselves in second place and they managed to break away from dark zero because dark zero lost their match look at fourth on downwards six points four points four points four point zero points that is so close. Rise Nation could win their next two matches and vault up into the top four, given what happens with the rest of those standings. And then, sitting atop the mountain, plus 17 and plus 21 differentials for Reciprocity and Evil Geniuses. You know, North America is really interesting as a region because it's neither top and bottom heavy, nor uh, exceptionally close. It's both. It's all of the things. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the bottom half excluding Rise, then you've got a very close context contest. You've got the top half excluding EG, and you've got a very close contest. And then you've got EG, which is breaking away from the pack, and Rise in the same way, but in the other direction. So it's a really interesting region right now in terms of how these matches are playing out. Yeah. Ultimately, a pretty interesting day. You had three matches go the distance, and one that was basically decided when Achieved said, you know what, I'm ready to go to bed early tonight, and <laughs> carried the rest of his team with him. And because of that, we're all done for the evening. That's Play Day number five in the books. We'll be back with some more exciting action in just a very short period of time because Super Month still has about a week and a half left to go before we head on to Montreal for the Invitational. So on behalf of Kickstarter and myself, all of our production team, ESL and Ubisoft, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening, afternoon, or morning, depending on where you are. Take care.